quantum physics has always been a realm of mystery and wonder, filled with phenomena that defy intuition. Among these, super radiance, a synchronized burst of light emitted by atoms, is both fascinating and elusive. While it has been observed in confined optical cavities, its occurrence in free space has remained an unsolved problem. Recent breakthroughs, however, bring us closer to understanding how atoms might synchronize in the vast expanse of free space. This isn't just a leap in scientific curiosity, it's a step toward revolutionizing how we interact with the quantum world. In this video, we'll dive into the science behind super radiance, explore the latest research breakthroughs, and uncover why this discovery is so important for the future of quantum physics and technology. Super radiance, at its core, is about synchronization. When atoms interact with photons in confined spaces, such as optical cavities, they emit light in perfect unison, producing a burst of energy far more intense than if each atom acted alone. This phenomenon occurs because the mirrored walls of the cavity allow photons to bounce back and forth, creating a feedback loop. Atoms absorb these photons and re-emit them, aligning their emissions to create a collective, amplified output. In contrast, the dynamics change drastically in free space. Without the reflective boundaries of a cavity, photons disperse in all directions. Each atom emits light independently, akin to musicians playing their instruments without a conductor. This lack of synchronization results in a disorganized emission pattern, making super radiance seemingly impossible in such an uncontrolled environment. In a cavity system, the interaction between atoms and photons is all to all, meaning every atom can influence every other atom's emission. This interconnectedness is the key to their synchronized behavior. In free space, however, this interaction is limited and scattered, akin to trying to have a conversation in a noisy, crowded room. The absence of feedback and alignment makes it difficult for atoms to collectively emit light. The challenge of achieving super radiance in free space is more than just a technical hurdle. It's a question of fundamental physics. Can we create conditions under which independent atoms behave collectively in the absence of boundaries? A recent experiment captivated the scientific community by attempting to observe super radiance in free space. Researchers used a pencil-shaped cloud of ultra-cold atoms arranged in free space and excited them with a continuous laser. Their goal was to determine if these atoms could synchronize their emissions, hinting at the elusive phenomenon of free space super radiance. The initial results were intriguing. Researchers observed signs of partial synchronization where some atoms aligned their emissions. This raised the possibility of super radiance occurring in free space, challenging decades of assumptions. However, the data sparked debate. Was this truly super radiance or merely a coincidental alignment under specific conditions? To probe deeper, theoretical physicists at Quantum Physics Division and National Institute of Standards and Technology conducted advanced simulations. Each atom was modeled as a dipole, capable of absorbing and emitting photons. These simulations replicated the experimental conditions and provided insight into the observed behavior. The findings revealed that the observed partial synchronization was not true super radiance. Instead, it resulted from specific experimental conditions, such as the density of the atomic cloud and the laser's intensity. Ana Maria Ray, a leading theoretical physicist at GILA explained the challenge. In many cases, the interactions can be weak enough that simplified treatments are possible, but it was initially not clear if that was going to be the case in this experiment. The number of accessible states increases exponentially in free space compared to a cavity system, making the problem significantly more complex. Graduate student Sana Agarwal, the paper's first author, elaborated on the methods. She said, we considered a microscopic model in which every atom acts like a dipole and used it to study the emergent properties of the entire atomic cloud. 
The laser beam is a plane wave, imprinting a specific phase pattern on the atoms, which is crucial in determining how the atoms interact. The researchers simulated varying conditions, including different laser powers and atom densities, to see how these factors influence the system's behavior. Our simulations showed that a mean field approximation, which reduces the complexity greatly by treating the atoms as classical magnets, was enough to reproduce the physics, Ray noted. However, she added, while our simulations reproduce the experimental observations in the dilute regime, it will be very exciting to study new regimes where our current theory models become obsolete and better treatments are required. This collaboration between experimentalists and theorists exemplifies the best of scientific inquiry. The combination of hands-on experiments and rigorous simulations bridge the gap between observation and theory, offering valuable insights into the behavior of atomic systems in free space. This work builds on foundational quantum theories, such as the Dickey model, which first described collective atomic behavior. By challenging and refining these theories, the research pushes the boundaries of what we know about light-matter interactions. Additionally, parallels can be drawn with Bose-Einstein condensates, where particles synchronize at extremely low temperatures. Such connections open avenues for exploring collective quantum behaviors in varied contexts. Another relevant theory is the concept of spontaneous symmetry breaking in quantum systems. This principle, often observed in condensed matter physics, explains how systems can transition into a more ordered state from a disordered one. In the context of superradiance, spontaneous symmetry breaking could provide a framework to understand how partial synchronization emerges and what conditions might allow a transition to full superradiance in free space. This idea complements the Dickey model by adding another layer of explanation for the observed phenomena. One of the most exciting aspects of this research is its potential to inspire new experimental designs. Increasing the density of atomic clouds or altering their geometry could create conditions more conducive to synchronization. Advanced optical techniques might also help control photon directions, unlocking new possibilities for achieving superradiance in free space. Theoretical challenges are equally compelling. Current models, while effective for dilute systems, fall short for dense, highly interactive atomic arrangements. Developing quantum-level simulations that capture these complexities is a critical next step. Such models could predict the behavior of free space systems more accurately and guide the design of experiments aimed at achieving synchronization. This research underscores a broader truth about science. Progress often comes from asking bold questions and venturing into uncharted territory. The quest to understand superradiance in free space is a testament to the power of curiosity and collaboration. It challenges us to rethink our assumptions and explore new frontiers in quantum physics. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned as we continue to unravel the mysteries of the universe, one quantum leap at a time.